Okay, so what you may or may not have noticed is that if the dot product between two vectors is negative, it means that the vectors make an obtuse angle between them. And this applies in any dimension, actually, not just 2D that I'm drawing here. It's just easier for me to draw. Um, if the dot product is zero, then they actually make a right angle with each other. And if the dot product is positive, then they make an acute angle with each other, so an angle less than 90 degrees. So here are three examples of that. Um, so we've got our obtuse. We've got our right angle. And we have our acute angle here. So that's already pretty useful. The sign of the dot product tells us the angle that they're making. So for example, if I wanted to see if something was above ground level, this is where we use it in graphics, um, then I would make sure that the dot product was, was positive. So, so right here, this, this vector is sort of below the ground level with respect to this upward direction. Um, so, okay. But, but I'm telling you sort of only still part of the story. This is part of something much more general um, called the dot product identity. So let me write this out in math. And we'll just say, it's really, it's kind of like a theorem, but it's also a definition of sorts. So I'll put theorem, quite well, slash definition. <laughs> uh, I've, I have a page I wrote about this a little more. It's just the law of cosines said differently. So it's the dot product identity. Um, it's the law of cosines masquerading as a dot product thing. So what it is, it says that, well, we, we'll go back to 3D vectors. So the dot product, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. We can think of these in any dimensions again, but the dot product of a vector V1 with a vector V2 is the magnitude, remember the length of V1, times the magnitude of V2 times the cosine of the angle between them. So maybe that's starting to sound a little more like the law of cosines, if you remember that from high school um, trig. So this is the dot product identity. Um, and so now we can see that if they're making a right angle, so a right angle, well, theta is pi over 2 radians, right, or 90 degrees. And the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that's the specific reason why dot products are zero for right angles. And if we keep going, we say, well, if you know angle is greater than 90 degrees, um, but also less than or equal to 180, so we'll say angle is less than or equal to 180 and greater than 90. Um, then we then we we have um, sorry, let me say theta again. Then we have cosine of theta is less than zero, so that's why. And similarly, if we have our theta, which is greater than or equal to zero, but less than 90 strictly, then the cosine of theta is strictly greater than zero. Okay. Okay, so we can actually use this equation here to solve for the angle between two vectors by just taking dot products and magnitudes. So we're going to have to isolate this theta on one side of the equation by itself. So the first thing I'll do is divide by magnitude of v1 and the magnitude of v2, and I get this cosine of theta on one side by itself. Now we're going to have to use the inverse cosine. So take the inverse cosine of both sides of the equation, and we get theta is equal to the inverse cosine of the dot product over the magnitude of the two vectors. Okay. So let's look at an example. So let's say that we had the vector 2, 0, 1 in 3D, and then we had the vector negative 1, negative 2, 0 in 3D. So we'll say that uh, that's V1 and that's V2. I'm going to not draw the arrows because it just takes a while. Okay, so the magnitude of V1 is actually equal to the magnitude of V2, which is going to be the square root of 5. So 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared is 5. Um, okay, cool. So what about the dot product? So v1 dot v2 is going to just be negative 2. 
because we have 2 times negative 1 plus 0 times negative 2 plus 1 times 0. That's negative 2. So we'll have that theta then is equal to the arc cosine, that's another name for the inverse cosine, of negative 2 over square root of 5 plus times square root of 5. So negative 2 over 5. Okay. So I don't know what that is, but I do know just by looking at the dot product that these vectors are going to make an angle of greater than 90 degrees. So let me actually pop into a console in JavaScript here and do this. So I want to know what's the inverse cosine of negative 2 over 5, right? Okay, so that's 1.982. Now this gives me in radians. So let me multiply by 180 degrees over math.pi radians. Okay, so the angle is 113.6. Degrees, so about 114 degrees. Now the first task that you're going to do in the homework is actually to code this up in general. So you should be able to choose two, two vectors and compute the angle between them. So here's this example. So you can see just looking at it, that this makes an angle slightly greater than 90 degrees. And indeed, when I plug it in, it tells me 113.578. So there we go. All right. So that is how that works. Now, just one more comment I want to make is, to me, this is amazing, okay? Um, and one of the things that's so cool about it is you can do these tests, even if you don't know the exact angle, you can figure out if, if it's zero, less than zero, or greater than, or um, you can figure out if it's, it's uh, less than 90 degrees, greater than 90 degrees, or equal to 90 degrees, without taking a single square root transcendental function like cosine or anything like that. Just by doing this multiplication, and summing, you can figure out information about the angle. And that's amazing because doing multiplication and summing is really fast. And that's the same reason that I said, let's try to avoid the square root when we were doing the COVID simulation. So that's really nifty. All right, so one more thing I want to mention about this is now that we know the math, we can actually let some libraries take care of some of that for us. So if you go to the course webpage, you'll see a link on Monday for the GeoMatrix library. So this is a library that we're going to be using um, that does vector and matrix operations. So basically all of our math that we need to do in the class. And so right now we've talked about a vector in three dimensions and a vector in two dimensions, but we'll be focusing mostly on the three dimension. And so here's how you get to the documentation for it. Um, but let me actually show you. So, so look, there's actually a, a function that computes the angle between two vectors already although I'm going to have you implement that manually um, just as a test. But you, you can test it against this. But let's just see how, to, how, to, how does the API look. So we'll look at the example we had before. So see vec3.from values um, 2, 0, 1. So this is how you make it. Actually, I actually have to say glmatrix.vec3.from values 2, 0, 1. So actually behind the scenes, it has what's called the prototype of, of an array of three elements. So you can actually access the elements component-wise just as if it were an array. Okay, so the x component is 2 at index 0, the y component is 0 at index 1, etc. But it has some, some more functionality that comes along with it. So let me make a, another vector and show you. So if I say v2 is equal to gl matrix dot from values. Um, let's see, I had negative 1, negative 2, 0. Okay. Um, whoops, sorry, I meant to say geomatrix.vec3 different values. And now I can say geomatrix.dot dot v1, v2. Sorry, geomatrix.vec3 dot dot v1, v2. And you'll see that that gives me the dot product between the two vectors. So I don't have to actually, I mean, I'm sure you could do it pretty easily, it's just a loop. Um, through three values, but but it does it for you. Um, and let's check. So if I say we'll do the angle thing, even though you'll be implementing this yourself, geomatrix.vec3.angle v1, v2. There we go. You see that's that's the radian representation of, of the angle. Um, okay, so we'll be digging into this library more and more over the next couple of weeks. But that's that. One more, just one more thing I want to show you. There's there's a function called normalize. Um, so 
to use this, we have to make a new vector. So I'll say v norm equals vec3 dot create. And the way the API works is I actually have to pass what I want to return to by reference. So if I say vec3 dot normalize, and then the result is going to be stored in v norm, and I'll pass it v1. Um, I'll see that v norm, it shows me there. This is what v norm gives me. So 0 0.8, 0 0.4. And let's just compare that again to, to v1. So compared to 2, 0, 1, we see that it, that it actually is in the same direction. You can see that this is this x component is twice the z component. Um, but it's a little bit shorter. And in particular, what normalize means is we're going to make it have a length or a magnitude of 1. So if I say vec3 dot, if I say gl matrix dot vec3 dot length, or len um, v1. We see the length of v1 is, is 2.23. Geomatrix.vec3.len of v norm is 1 up to, there's a little bit of numerical precision. It's not exactly 1, but it's very, very close. So the way you normalize a vector actually is you divide each component by the length, and that will give you. So, so 2 over 2.236. Is, is that 0.89, so that's where that comes from, 0.894. And then 1 over 2.236 is the 0.447, okay. So that's how you normalize, but again, the, the GL matrix library does this for you. All right, so we'll work on this a little more in class. Um, I'll just have you do one real quick exercise in the browser to make sure that you're able to use this library.